some sort of device in his hand. And you can see him there now, Dan, on the pavement doing something. But I think they're going to try to look inside of that vehicle, right? And that's what they're doing. They're going to go in through the driver's side door, I believe, and look inside the vehicle to see if, if the driver is unconscious, if he's passed out, if he's dead, if he's having a seizure, if he's inflicted some injury upon himself. This heavily armored vehicle now in position, of course, to get the best view yet inside that cab. And we've been talking about the length of time that has passed since the chase came to an end. And the reason may well have been to give time for this armored vehicle to arrive. Perhaps it's a DPS vehicle, perhaps some other law enforcement agency. The determination made that this was the kind of vehicle needed to get the kind of view inside that cab that they needed. Dan, I think he's going to climb into the back of this armored personnel carrier and come up through the opening on the top and try to peer into that truck. They are trying to get eyes inside that cab. Mm -hmm. So you have to assume if there's someone in there who's still alert and if that person has a weapon with the armored personnel carrier pulling up that close, they'd either open fire or surrender. So it makes you wonder what is going on or has gone on inside the cab of the stolen 18-wheeler in this, the Texas trucker standoff. Yeah, certainly uh, with this vehicle in position, heavily armored, uh, they've got a now a very good view, perhaps for the first time now, a very good view inside that cab, a protected view as well, given all of the, the uh, armor and uh, bulletproof glass uh, on that armored vehicle. And uh, they've... Uh, we're, we're still waiting, though, to, to find out what they've been able to determine uh, by getting an up-close view uh, inside this inside this stolen 18-wheeler. Again, this, this police standoff uh, is happening at the end of a police pursuit that started earlier this morning uh, in the town of Kaufman, we believe. Uh, Kaufman area law enforcement, whether it's police or sheriffs in that area, uh, made the determination we're able to spot this stolen big rig truck. A uh, chase ensued uh, that went through uh, Dallas, Garland, headed east of Dallas along I-30, uh, and then it eventually the driver pulled onto an access road uh, paralleling eastbound I-30. Spike sp strips were deployed. Uh, the the 18-wheeler uh, lost at least five tires, the driver down to bare rims, but the chase continued along this uh, eastbound access road until the driver literally ran out of road. The truck came to a stop, but the driver uh, refusing to uh, exit the cab or not, to, not stepping out of that cab despite what appeared to be a number of uh, commands to do so. But after this lengthy standoff, which has certainly resulted in a major backup along eastbound lanes of I-30, uh, not too long ago we saw this uh, heavily armored vehicle arrive, uh, pull up right next to the, the cab of this stolen truck. This will afford the best view yet, uh, a clear angle on what exactly is going on, the situation inside uh, that cab. What is the situation with the driver? Is the driver still conscious? Uh, is he armed? And then if you look from the angle where Sky 4 is right now, we're looking through the windshield, and I can't see anyone in the cab. Just looking through the front windshield, Yeah, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an odd moment. They want to make sure that law enforcement will be safe before they you know, go in that, open a door there. They're trying to see what has happened. It's quite possible that maybe the, the driver is passed out, is unconscious, or has done something to himself. But you're absolutely right, Sean. As we peer in, again, in our limited angle access, you're right. Uh, as we look inside that cab, at this point, hard to see anyone right now again from our angle. So it remains a 
a mystery at this point. What is going on inside the cab? Okay, earlier, uh, a Fox 4 viewer named Joe Ross uh, sent us some video of the chase as it was happening along eastbound I-30. Right now, we're going to uh, take a look at that video. So uh, that passed right by Joe Ross where he was at that intersection there, Dan Godwin. Yes, and of course, once you're on the ground and you can not only see things but hear the, the sirens and hear the intensity of the situation uh, when you're on the ground, that, of course, when we've got our angle up from Sky 4, you're not able to hear what this uh, chase sounded like. Now, that looked like that video of that chase when the truck was moving at a much higher speed uh, perhaps at that point, the uh, wheels, from what we could tell, uh, the tires of the uh, stolen big rig had not yet been torn off by the spike strips. But uh, as the chase went on, uh, we saw the speeds uh, gradually lower uh, as the uh, driver of the 18-wheeler was down to just bare rims on at least five of his wheels. So uh, that, that military-style vehicle there is the property of the Hunt County Sheriff's Department. And we know that Hunt County constables were involved in the chase earlier. So the Hunt County...